Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching today. So, I'm so excited. Today I'm bringing you a springy, very bright color cut crease. I decided to go with some pinks and purples and then a pink glossy lip, kind of a coral lip. I thought this was perfect for spring. I, don't, I haven't really done a really traditional spring look with all colors. Like, it's still spring and I'm choosing dark lip colors like I just can't get out of dark lip colors but guys I am so satisfied and excited on how this look turned out um it's I say this is more of the natural side of a cut crease but you know normally cut creases it's not a tradition but a lot of them do include glitter so I decided to do something maybe a little bit toned down it's not an everyday look but something a little bit more natural natural so I decided to tone it down just a little bit but still kind of go for some drama I had to add some lashes some a winged liner and like a glossy coral pink lip I'm so excited guys I'm just excited so if you want to learn how to do this look definitely keep on watching I'll give some really good details up in there so I hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to follow me on Instagram I'm at just wing underscore I probably posted a lot of pictures of this so <laughs> so anyways if you want to know how to do this look please keep on watching and we'll get started so I've already primed my face for foundation and I use the makeup forever step one mattifying primer in my t-zone then I use Maybelline's baby skin all over my face besides the t-zone and then I prime my eyes for eyeshadow with the MAC pro longwear paint pot and soft ochre then I set it with wet and wild shadow and creme brulee so our blending motions can be more fluent and we're blending on a powdery base instead of a creamy base plus the primer won't crease throughout the day so to start off the look I'm getting Sephora shadow in the color love song has a little bit of shimmer but doesn't doesn't translate a lot of glitter to the eyes just a little bit but not too much then I'm going in with the Japanese number 240 angled brow brush so as you can see I have hooded eyes so when I look straight ahead you can't completely see my lid so I have a little bit of a hooded eye where my crease is kind of hanging over my lid so to do a cut crease you want to make the line right above your natural crease look straight ahead you don't want to look down because you won't get a true idea of where your true crease is and you want to do a thin line right above your natural crease. So when you open your eyes, you can tell it's a cut crease. Angled brow brushes are usually the best for drawing a thin defined line. So if you are wanting to do a cut crease, I recommend getting an angled brow brush, something that's gonna pick up product and is dense enough to pick up enough product. So I'm just drawing this line. It's the hardest thing probably is after you get drawing the crease down is making sure it's the same as the other eye kind of like with wing liner it just has to be the same so it's a little bit tough but you can get through it with some practicing and even the line was a little bit different but I did some tweaking so I fixed it so I'm going in with these this eco tools like small detailed smudger brush and I'm going to grab a little bit of love song and I'm going to blend out this line that we just drew in our crease. Now you wanna blend above. You don't wanna go below the line because that would defeat the purpose of us drawing a line in our crease. So you wanna blend above it. This is going to make the line look a little bit more diffused, but yet it's still gonna be defined at the bottom side of it. And one thing I wanted to add is when we drew our crease, I kind of flicked it out a little bit. So I usually don't like to blend out on that side of it. I go very close where it starts to fade away, the blending part, but I don't like to go completely on top of the flick because I feel like the blending makes it a little bit more thicker and it doesn't have as much of a defined wing little flick. So I tend to stay away from that area, but kind of get close, but make it look real natural and slowly blend it away. So. I do tend to stay away from that area just so it's a little bit more defined. So anyways, now I'm going in with the NYX Individual Shadow. This is in the color Skinny. It's a very beautiful purple. It appears a little bit lighter on camera, but it's a pretty eggplant type of purple. And I'm going to grab that same Japanese angled brow brush, and I'm going to go over that pink line that we just drew with this purple. It's going to be pretty easy because we already, we've already drawn our pink line, so we kind of have a guideline to go over, so it should be pretty simple. So I'm just applying this right on top of the pink line. This is going to add a little bit more of definition to the crease. Now I'm going to grab the Sephora Shadow in Love Song and the small Eco Tools smudger and I'm going to blend this out. I'm going to make the pink and the purple merge. Again, don't go below the purple line because again that would defeat the whole purpose of us having a defined cut crease line. So you want to blend above it so these pink and purple 
colors just merge together perfectly. Now this is the part which really makes the cut crease. I'm taking a concealer. It's gonna a little bit lighter than my natural skin tone, but I'm just taking a Wet n Wild flat shader brush and I'm going to literally cut out the crease. You probably will need a magnifying mirror because that's how specific and delicate this process is. This is really what's going to make the cut crease. It's going to define the line even more and really cut the crease even more. So I literally grabbed the smallest amount of concealer at a time. I don't want to grab too much, but just the perfect amount where it's not going to crease or smudge when I open my eyes. And I also took the concealer out under the flick of the crease line that we drew just to kind of clean it up a bit. And again, we're still cutting that flick a little bit just to make it a little bit more defined. And I just kind of tapped and blended in the concealer on my eyelids, just a preliminary step to prevent any smudging, but I made sure that I didn't apply too much concealer, but just kind of tapping and blending any in on the lid. Don't mess with the cut crease part. So I'm going to go back over with the purple very carefully. I really, really was careful with this because I didn't want to go back over with concealer, so it's pretty easy. I just went over right where the crease cut and right where that purple line was. So be very careful. If you mess up, you can clean it up with concealer, but I wanted to redefine this line so I didn't plan to put on any more concealer. So I made sure that I was really careful. With the Eco Tools Small Smudger Fluffy Brush and the color Love Song from Sephora, I'm going to blend again, making sure that the line is diffused. Again, do not blend below the line. It defeats the whole purpose of us drawing a line. So blend above, not below making sure these colors are diffused and there's just still definition, but it looks blended. Now I'm taking the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Pot in the color Champagne Truffle. It's a beautiful champagne color, and I'm going to apply this on the lids. I feel like a champagne pink color would go well with the purple crease. So they did pair perfectly together, and it's just very simple and elegant, a little bit shimmery, so it's going to open the eyes even more. Now I'm taking the Absolute New York Duo Stroke Liner. This has a fatter eyeliner on one side and a thinner on the other. I am going to take the thinner side and I'm going to start in the middle of our eyelid with the eyeliner and then I kind of work my way in and then I'm just going to work my way out. Pretty simple. I made sure I wanted to draw a thin line because cut creases can really open up your eyes so I didn't want to take away the meaning for a cut crease. So I'm going to draw a thin line in the beginning. I'm going to wing it out. I feel like it would go good with the winged out crease. So I thought they would just pair perfectly together. So I just kind of pressed it up against at an angle of, of my on my eyes. So it ended up turning perfectly. So I got a little bit lucky. <laughs> Wing liner is so hard sometimes. It's really a struggle. All right, guys, we got one wing liner down, one more to go. I really hope they turn out equal. Doing the same thing as I did on the other eye, starting in the inner corner, working my way out, making sure it's a thin line, and that's pretty much the easiest part of eyeliner, but the hard part, doing the wing liner, but we can get through this. We can get through this. So, let's go. So I just pressed up against my eye at an angle, and of course they never really turn out equal, but with a little bit of tweaking, I think I can get it close as close enough okay so then I went with some eyelore number 80 lashes to add a little bit more drama I absolutely love these lashes <clears throat> they're like my number one lashes at the moment I did get an eyeshadow pencil brush and just press the lashes down to make sure there weren't any gaps lifting off my lash line so they can look as natural as possible. So I'm going in with the Clinique Foundation, the Beyond Perfecting Foundation Concealer. I believe I'm in one linen, and I'm going to blend this out with the Damp Beauty Blender. You want to make sure that you use dabbing motions. That's going to give you the most airbrushed effect that most of likely all of us want here. And rubbing motions would make your foundation look streaky, uneven, and it wouldn't be distributed all over the skin evenly. So dabbing motions going to give you air 
airbrush scan is going to distribute product evenly and give you an overall even skin tone. Now I'm going in with my favorite concealer combo. I'm going in with CoverGirl's Ready Set Gorgeous Concealer in Fair and Maybelline's Master Conceal in Light. And I'm going to apply this with a flat shader brush because the Maybelline is a little bit thick, so I just feel it's better to apply with a brush instead of getting, getting it all over my hands. So I did apply the CoverGirl first, and then I blended that out with a beauty blender using dabbing motions. It's the same technique with concealer. You don't want to use rubbing motions with a concealer because it's just going to make it look streaky. So I blended out with my beauty blender. I highlighted, put it on the nose, the chin, and under the eyes to cancel out any dull tones under the eyes so I can look awake and alive and not like a zombie. Now it's time for contouring and I'm going in with the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer and Light Bronzer, my number one favorite bronzer at the moment. I feel like I use it in every video and I use it daily when I contour. So, okay, the smell, you gotta get it because the smell is amazing and the product is too. I just can't get over it. It's like a coconut heaven. So I'm getting a Sephora number 74 Pro Contour to really dig into the contours of my cheekbones to really get a detailed contour going. And I did add a little bit of extra product that I had left on the brush and put it over on the side of the forehead, the temples, the jawline, etc. just to warm up the crease. Then I went in, or not the crease, my vase, then I went in with a BH Cosmetics number 114 with a little extra product to really build it up and to blend it out as well. So I'm going in with my favorite highlighter from ColourPop. This is in the color Spoon. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's so buttery. And I'm going to apply this on my chin. I apply it on my nose and my cheekbones. I use this every day I highlight because I can't go without it. And I have hit pan, which is like the saddest story ever because this is my favorite highlighter of all time and you have to get it because I feel like it would look beautiful on all skin tones. I'm going to take a damp beauty blender and I'm going to dab the highlighter and make sure it's blended out because I did apply it with my fingers and I just want to make sure it's blended. I'm going in with the Hourglass Ambient Strobe Powder and incandescent strobe light and I'm, this is a little bit more of a natural toned down highlighter but it's very elegant it's very beautiful it's just gorgeous it adds the perfect amount of highlight but not going over the top so I'm doing this to kind of set that highlighter but add a little bit more pop to it so I'm just tapping a little bit on my chin my cheekbones and my nose where I highlighted with that color pop highlighter now I'm going in with the Lorac Pro blush to go and the color coral. Beautiful coral color. I figured since it was spring I'd go with a little bit of a brighter blush. I'm using Real Techniques tapered blush brush and tapping this on my cheeks making sure it's blended and I always have a heavy hand with blush. It's it's never really a question. I always do. So I'm going to curl my lashes making sure my real lashes and the false lashes blend together nicely and that they look natural as possible. They're blending together. Then I'm going to apply a few coats of mascara. I use the IT Cosmetics Superhero Mascara which is like my current favorite mascara. It's amazing. I use it every time I put on mascara. Always. It's just amazing. Now for lips, I'm going in with like a bright coral pink lipstick. This is Laura Geller's Tiger Lily. It's very moisturizing. It stays on forever. It's a beautiful color. It's perfect for spring and summer, and I figured it would just go well with the eyes. And to add a little bit of glossiness, I went over the lipstick with this like pinky, very shimmery gloss. It's gorgeous perfect combo so I'm going in with the Urban Decay setting spray to help my makeup last throughout the day and I always get scared spraying this stuff or any sp spraying this on my face because I hadn't opened it yet so I had to like click it a few times and wasn't sure when it was going to come out but it feels so refreshing it just scares me for some reason so that is the end of the look I really hope you guys enjoyed I I just appreciate it so much I really love how this look came out thought it was perfect for spring so I really wanted to create a cut crease that was hooded eye for hooded eyes. So I really hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'm at justwingit underscore. I hope you all have a good day, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.